welcome everyone. I hope you've enjoyed the show so far. Today begins seasons 2 of Chloe and the Professor. Now that we're on a one show a week schedule, we've been able to make a few improvements. Rest assured, our dedication to brutal honesty and not shying away from the hard facts will not change. To do anything less would be a great disservice to all of our viewers. Today's show is the first in a three-part series about the future of video games and the technology behind it. Now let's start the show. Fanbot tells me you were successful. Yes, your intel was right on the money as always, Professor. That should slow them down. I still have nothing on the executive or his organization. I may have something. One of my contacts leaked info that might be of some use. About time we got a lead. Apparently, he's gained control of a powerful mobile gaming syndicate. There's many of them. They take advantage of people with addictions to make millions. I should have seen it. Their agenda is similar to the one he had back when I first defeated him. Any idea which group? Take your pick. Mobile gaming is a cesspool of sleazy organizations. I'll have my people investigate them one at a time if it comes to that. Meanwhile, I'll figure out a way to neutralize or destroy those artifacts. However, you should be aware that I can't predict what will happen if I do manage to destroy them. I trust you, Professor. Whatever happens I know you did your best. As always I will take every precaution. I will do everything in my power not to betray that trust. Chloe, what's that thing on your head? It's a new gaming VR headset the professor created. What in the world is VR? It stands for virtual reality. Oh, I saw that in the 90s. I didn't know it was still a thing. No, VR back then was too early. Computers then just didn't have the power to do it right. Today, that's no longer the case. We finally have technologies that can do VR right. All right, so how is it? Pretty amazing. So, will this turn any game into virtual reality? No, the game experience has to be built for VR. There's a small number of games right now. But, with the first commercial headset about to hit the market in April that's going to change. That's next month. Yeah, the first VR headset gamers will be able to get is the HTC Vive. How many more of these VR headsets are there going to be? There will be several. I'm getting kind of hungry. Let's go to the kitchen. I'd offer you something, but the professor doesn't keep fresh blood in the fridge. That's okay. I'll nibble on you later. And is that all you'll do? You know me so well. So, this VR stuff. Why is it suddenly making a comeback? I guess because the time is right. Early attempts at VR were very primitive and prohibitively expensive. Also, they often weren't very good. The headsets were bulky and heavy. Rather than revolutionize games it became a short-lived novelty. The only thing meaningful that came out of that era was an arcade VR game. You and another player roamed around a vector graphics arena made of platforms and stairs. You shot at one another while trying to avoid a pterodactyl that would swoop in occasionally and knock you off the stairs. Compared to VR experiences today, it was like the difference between a modern movie and a silent film. Oh yes, I remember those. I was there when Fritz Lang filmed Metropolis. VR has matured significantly, but you still need a beefy computer. We've come all this way, but you still need a powerful computer? Yes, we've learned a lot about how to do VR right. To do it right, you need powerful hardware or you might experience some negative side effects. What sort of negative side effects? The worst is nausea. It was discovered that refresh rates are important. Low refresh rates in the headset can lead to rather severe nausea. This is also one of the problems that prevented early VR from taking off. Also, the resolution needs to be high, or you'll have the effect of you looking through a screen door. It breaks the suspension of disbelief. I see. So you need that powerful hardware to push the high refresh rates and resolutions needed, or you could get violently ill trying to use VR. Exactly. VR would go nowhere if it constantly made you sick to the stomach using it. Now, you said there were several other headsets beside the HTC Vive that were coming. Yes, 
the Vive is the first. It was developed by HTC and Valve, the same Valve who made Steam. In fact, it is on sale on Steam right now. It is different from other VR headsets in that it lets you roam around an entire room, while the rest are experienced sitting down. The most well-known is the first one that went into development. The Oculus Rift. It started on Kickstarter, then the company was purchased by Facebook. Two developer kit models have been produced, and the final product will be released later this year. Why wasn't it out before the Vive? The Oculus Rift was delayed a few times as improvements were made. They were the ones who discovered the negative side effects and how to get rid of them. That's why the Vive was able to come out so much sooner. They didn't have to do all of that research because the Oculus Rift team did it already. It's true. Many say the Vive is copying the Oculus Rift, but the experience Valve has envisioned for it is radically different. You can't roam around the room with the Oculus Rift the way you can the Vive. That's not to say the Vive can be used the same way you would a Rift, but the types of VR experiences you can have will be radically different. Another VR headset is coming from Sony for the PlayStation. It is called PlayStation VR, and will work a lot like the Oculus Rift. Samsung has a VR headset which uses their smartphones as a screen. Google had cardboard. A headset similar to the one made by Samsung that requires a smartphone, but it was made literally out of corrugated cardboard. A headset made from cardboard? That's funny. It actually worked, but was meant to be more a novelty than anything you'd use on a daily basis. Google has a standalone headset in development which doesn't require a computer. It will be a self-powered device that runs Android. Is that it, then? No. There are several other lesser known and lower budget VR headsets in development. The VR market will soon be crowded with competition, but it remains to be seen if the lower budget headsets can actually compete with the Oculus Rift and the Vive. What about games that use VR? Are there any out right now? A few actually. Three you can play right now on Steam. Subnautica, Elite Dangerous, and 5089 a retro-style first-person role-playing game. Coming soon is Eve Valkyrie, a space dogfighting sim set in the EVE Online universe. More will be coming. Games like Star Citizen are said to be getting VR headset support in the near future. Unreal Engine 4 has Oculus Rift support built in. And, there are dozens of gamer community mid games for Oculus Rift. Some are simply proof-of-concept games. Most of them are horror games. The horror genre will get a boost from VR. Horror, sounds like my thing. You would like that. It's your favorite movie genre after all. That's because you're cute when you're scared. Well, I do like the cuddling on the couch part. So, I'm guessing VR is going to inspire a whole new kind of video game experience. Yes, we've only just scratched the surface of what's possible with current VR. The professor sees VR as a stepping stone so something far greater, what would it be? There have been very early experiments in projecting images directly into the mind using magnets and very low power microwaves. Wait, you're talking about nerve gear? Similar in concept. Yes, but way too early to be useful for fully immersive games like Sword Art Online. Speaking of which, IBM and Bandai have teamed up to create a Sword Art Online MMORPG using custom VR hardware. But, the professor believes that within in 5 to 10 years we could have real working nerve gear. Research is ongoing and the technology is expected to advance very quickly. Far faster than VR has. That's incredible, I can't wait to try that out. Until then, VR headsets will be the closest we get to being immersed in worlds that look, feel and smell real. I'm betting this early VR technology is expensive. Yeah, on top of the cost of a beefy PC to power the headset, the Oculus Rift will run you 600 US dollars, while the Vive will cost you 800. Cardboard and the Samsung headsets are much cheaper, but you also need a smartphone to go with them. Also, the price tag of the PlayStation VR isn't out yet, but is expected to be somewhere around 500 to 600 dollars. It doesn't have as many games as the Rift and Viva do right now. I'd think the PlayStation 4 hardware wasn't powerful enough for VR. A lot of fanboys are, of course, declaring the PlayStation VR to be the PC killer, but the games shown so far have featured simplistic graphics. 
sort of what you'd see in games like Job Simulator and Octodad, basically. You won't see PlayStation VR games with the graphics of the Order 1886, or even Destiny. Vulcan might help change that some, assuming Sony ever ports Vulcan to the PlayStation 4. My instructor talked about Vulcan the other day. It's like DirectX 12, but it works on multiple platforms. Vulcan and DirectX 12 will be used a lot for VR in the near future. We'll soon see some amazing stuff using those new graphics APIs. Say, I bought, the thing on Voodoo the other day. Want to go watch it? The classic John Carpenter version, or the crappy remake? The classic one of course, remastered in HD. You know how to make a girl happy. We went to the place you told us to, but when we got there the item was gone. This is going to be a problem. What state was the vault in when you arrived? There was no sign of forced entry to the vault. My employer isn't going to be pleased. He despises competition. Whoever got to the item first had to have known the code to unlock the vault. No, there are other methods available to certain individuals. One of which I think is becoming a serious liability. What do you want me to do? Proceed to your next target. We must remain on schedule. As for the other matter, I'll deal with it personally. Whatever you say, just so long as we get paid, just continue giving us satisfactory work, Mr. Andrews. Sir, we have a problem. I think it's time we did something about a certain loose end. Yes, sir, I have the perfect person in mind just for this job. 